All right, fashion dolls, this is my first time back live on Facebook here. Welcome back. Hopefully this works where I can add Michael to my live. And you guys can see me, y'all can hear me. Okay, let me see now. I haven't done this in so long. I really haven't. Okay, let me message him and see if that'll work. Because we're having some technical issues. Okay, there's Michael. Let me try to add him now. I haven't done this in so long. It's saying my connection is slow. Let me try to... That's invite friends to watch. Hi, Dominica. Hey, baby. That's invite friends to watch. I'm trying to add someone to the live. How do you add someone? I am doing wonderful. How are you? Okay. Yes. Let's see. Let's see if this will work. Wait a minute. I see y'all are just coming in. Welcome, everyone, if you're just coming in. It says adding Michael, so I'm waiting on... Michael to join me and we can get this interview started. Other than that, how are you guys doing this Friday? It's been so long since I've done a show here where I first started on Facebook. So we're doing this today because it was acting up on IG. I could not see Michael. It's saying adding him, but I don't see him. It is taking forever taking forever I, I see you Chris they're saying no answer okay let me accept yes hi everybody welcome if you're just coming in T G I F. wait a minute Oh my God, it only took. <laughs> there you are. Oh, it took it's, it's forever. Yes. Oh my well, God. Welcome to the dollhouse. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. I am amazing. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. It is such a pleasure to have you here. Minus the technical difficulties that we were having from IG to here. Oh, oh. it was delaying this thing. Are we delayed, y'all? Give me a thumbs up. Are we good? Oh, let me see. I think we're I think we're good. Okay. Yeah, you froze on my end. <laughs> okay. Let, let me try to remove. I, we we are just not today. It's just a day, y'all. We're having some technical issues, so bear yeah, with let's, us. Yeah. Let's see. So you got two audios coming in. Let me see. Let me try to remove and then. <laughs> Technology on a Friday is well enough. Yes, I, I, you're froze. I can't add you. Okay. Okay, let me try now. Okay. Okay, can y'all see me? Can y'all hear me? Let me know. Let me try to add Michael back again. And hopefully it works this time. Uh 
Yeah, we. Okay. Uh, oh, All right. Let's see. Can you hear me now? Can you see me? Yeah. Perfect. All right. Perfect. Welcome, there we go. Welcome back to the dollhouse. I apologize Thank about you. any technical issues we were having. So, TGIF, how are you doing? This the year is halfway out. We are now fixing to be in 2025 before you know it. So, how has 2024 been for you so far? Um, 2024 has been pretty cool. I don't really complain much in life anyway. Um, nothing, yeah, 2024 is pretty good. A bunch of different lessons, um, lessons, I'm sorry. Um, having to let go of certain friends or certain people that's not good for me. It don't fit what I'm trying to do in life. So that's probably the hardest part. But I think we go, I think we experience that in every year. It's not just this year. Just letting go is probably the hardest part and learning to adapt to new surroundings and environments and people so yeah absolutely absolutely so let's start from the beginning because i like to start with all of my guests from the beginning of their journey from uh -huh. then to now at what age did you discover the passion for filmmaking and acting so it was funny how i actually started i started off just wanting to be a writer I just like to, because I was working at a call center, and, and if you worked at a call center, sometimes you have a lot of different time on your hand, like a lot of spare time on your hand. So to get me through the day, I just started writing like different scripts. Um, and then, because I was living in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, this is about 2012-ish, maybe 2011, 2012. And then um, I couldn't find actors to act in what I was writing. So I was like, you know what? I'll learn how to act on my own. So then I started to do um, YouTube. And then I found like local theaters and local um, acting workshops in Milwaukee and Chicago, because Chicago is like that big city next to Milwaukee. Um, and then I moved to South Carolina, Columbia, and did the workshops, some workshops here, because there's not a lot to offer here. And then I did the workshops in Charlotte, and then I enrolled in um, USC, which is where I'm currently at, trying to get my bachelor's in theater, um, and really arts and science, but it's for theater. Um, so that's how the acting started. I didn't want to act. I wanted to write. So, but I couldn't find nobody. So I said, I figured it out my own self. And now it's giving me a chance to um, kind of find different parts of myself through different characters. And it helps me build my security because sometimes, you know, we all got insecure issues or some things we're not really comfortable about. So acting allows me to explore those and, and strengthen those weaknesses. So. That's my journey. <laughs> and you're in the Carolinas. I'm in the Carolinas as well also. So, I mean, it's like the talent is booming down here in the Carolinas, especially in North Carolina. And it's important that we keep continuing to uplift each other and let everybody know, network, connect with one another as right. well. Right. So, you said starting there, attending the university, and uh -huh. also the filmmaking aspect. What did that pass so, kind of similar story. I had, I wrote my first script. I was doing my own self teaching acting and I presented it to some local filmmakers here. I won't say their name. Um, but they were, the prices they were quoting me was they were trying to take advantage of me because I didn't know anything. So I'm like, I got a 30 page pilot. It was like, um, it was called We're in This Together. It's like a really old school type of, I don't say old school type of TV show, like a black TV show, positive. Um, not like drugs or strippers, just like a positive family. And the guy was trying to charge me like $10,000 to film it. And I'm like for 30 pages and he was just trying to take advantage of me. And I remember walking to, or not walking, but going to Wells Fargo and trying to get a loan for that because I didn't know any better. And the, the guy at the time was like, that's a dumb decision. Don't do that. <laughs> and I found myself disappointed. But then I sat there and thought, well, for $10,000, if I can come up with that money, first of all, I can buy my own film equipment and learn how to film. So I did that. I brought me a Black Magic Pocket Cinema camera, which is a high-end um, camera. And I started to take different classes on how to use it, as well as YouTube classes and pay attention to other films and notice what part of I don't like and what I do like. So and that's how the filming started. People would just try to take advantage of me because I didn't know anything. But now I know I can do shit by myself. <laughs> And that you do, you you went on to do a number of projects. Let's get yes. through the list here. You've got Street Logic, Collateral Damage, The Ambassador. You've got Game of Love, Redemption for Easter. Mm -hmm. You've got Sweet Mahogany too, Sweet Mahogany, Bondage. You've got so 
many. So yeah. out of all of your projects you've completed and worked on, started, which one has to be your favorite? And you've also have some more projects that are coming out as well. Too. Yes, yes. Look at you doing your research. <laughs> um, you know what my favorite project is? It's probably like the stage plays. I've got about five stage plays under my belt. I like to stay. I did Raging in the Sun. That's the most recent one. Um, and the reason I like the stage play is because it's acting right there. There's no pauses. You can't mess up. It's probably the most authentic acting you can do because it's in front of a live audience. So there's no cut. Wait, can I do that over? Like you have to nail it right there on the spot. So those type of actings are my favorite. Um, but if I had to go film, maybe the second Sweet Mahogany. I, I like that one the most. <laughs> I like that one the most. I love my co-star Jessica Lark. She just she's amazing, and I love Carlton Clay for giving me that opportunity. So that would be my favorite. Now I'm gonna go back to what you just said. You said a raisin in the sun, being being on stage live yeah. and like how we are right now in real time. The thing is about live, if you're on set, you know, you've got set design everything the same for on stage. Right. But right. in real time, there's a live audience. Mm -hmm. So if you mess up anything, that audience will catch <laughs> on to it and let you know. I've interviewed actors who act one actor actually split his pants while he was doing a live show. And wow. he literally had to say, well, the show must go on. You have to continue on. That's the thing about live shows in real time if you're doing it on theater. Now, if you are doing it like on set, it's just like, okay, the same thing. The record calls cut, the record calls go, let's go. Whatever. Right. 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 That way too. Yeah. But that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's, it's a really... There's a real big difference between film acting and acting on a stage because, like I said, in, on stage, you are in front of an audience. Like, you really can't mess up. And if you do, people see that. And when you do mess up, most times the audience don't know if you mess up. So you got to be able to adapt to that. Like, oh, I messed up. But they don't know, so I have to come up with something creative so that they don't know that I messed up. But with film, it's, it's a lot more patience. Like, if I'm not in that emotion I need to be, I can request the time, like, all right, give me like five minutes to go there and then roll the camera when you feel like I'm in that, that zone, so. Absolutely, absolutely. Not only that, but we talk about balance a lot on my platform. You're a dad as well, too. So how do you find yeah. that balance of being a dad, being an actor, and then being <laughs> a writer as well, too? It's a lot. It is. Um, first of all, my, my, my babies are beautiful. And I want to go on record and say, I ain't having no more. Two is enough. Um, but they're very supportive, especially my daughter. My daughter, whose name is Aubrey, she is exactly like me. So she wants to act. Um, so if she see me that I'm, I'm writing or she see that I'm practicing my line, she be like, hey, you want some help? <laughs> and if, if I allow her to read the script, because some of those scripts aren't PG related, I would definitely allow her to read. And she's funny because she'll look at me and be like, no, you're not quite there yet. Try it again. And I'm like, who are you talking to? But I appreciate it because kids ain't going to lie to you. And they ain't got no filters. They're going to make sure they tell you the truth. <laughs> so it's it's easy to adapt. Um, I think the hardest part is probably not always being home. And she noticed that. I'm like, yeah, I got to go today. She'd be like, you got to go again? Or are you coming back? I'm like, well, I'll come back in the morning. So that's probably the hardest part. But other than that, she understands what I want to do from her standpoint of a 10 year old she's understanding so it is definitely a balance while being on set and away from your family even when the pandemic struck like right. 2020 i must say it was difficult for a lot of us because we were away from our families we had to stay on set the majority of the time and right. we were doing things how we're doing it how we're doing this interview now which is virtual so a lot of things were done virtually and but the key thing is that was beautiful because we got to zone with each other. We got to connect with each other in a way that we've never connected before. And I'm going to say that technology has brought us all together. Right. During that time in 2020 when the pandemic struck, when things were shut down and all set. Whereas now, things, the world has opened back up and we're back on set. We're doing the casting calls. How did you manage during 2020 with everything being shut down? Because I know a lot of actors had to do their self home, at home, self audition tape and thing so how did you manage actually 2020 wasn't such a bad year from a cre it depends on how you look at it from a creative standpoint 
I think it allowed filmmakers to have to reach into that creative bag. So for me, I started to do, um, I don't know if you ever saw this, saw this show called Robot Chicken, like back in um, on Adult Swim. Yeah. So I started to create those type of shows called Michael Michael's Chicken. It was just me doing a bunch of series. Um, also inspired by um, Dave Chappelle's show and Kay and Pell, those shows. So that's how I adapted. It just allowed you to be creative in a way that we're not used to. So for that, it wasn't really... I kind of want to say I prefer that because it it made me think outside of the box. And where a lot of people wasn't doing audition, you have a decision or a choice to either not do anything or create your own type of um, businesses and opportunities for yourself, which I thought was perfect for me because I like to picture myself as creative. So I had to really dig <laughs> in my creative bag. And I did maybe about four or five episodes, but they were like four um Maybe about four episodes each or four series each, four different styles. So 2020 was actually, I learned more about myself in 2020 than I do now. And then I kind of find myself wishing I was still stuck in that mode because now I feel like we didn't got spoiled again and I don't put out as much content as I would like to. But in 2020, I feel like I was just putting out stuff left and right. So I, I, I enjoyed that. Now, You've got five upcoming projects. I'm going to go down the list here. Traffic Stop, Sweet Mahogany 3, The Final mm -hmm. Entanglement, The Assistant to A Family Affair, mm -hmm. Jump Ball, and the Trading Partner. You've got a lot of projects. I do. So which <laughs> are you looking forward to? Um, well, my favorite one out of the bunch, um, I would say... I like Jump Ball and I love The Assistant 2. The Assistant 2 is so amazing, especially because of the cast. Um, and Jump Ball, Taylor Johnson put me on on that project. She's so creative and talented. So I love Jump Ball because it allowed me to play somebody that I'm not whatsoever. Um, and The Assistant, I get a chance to bring a little comedy to the film because it's a really drama-filled movie. So it's good that I'm there because I, I make you guys laugh every once in a while, which I enjoy doing anyway. I think I'm a natural... I say a natural idiot because it's funny, um, but I, I just have that that natural. I love to laugh and I love to make people laugh. But yeah, those those are some really great projects that's coming out. I, I can't wait for y'all to see that. And I see your comedy as you mentioned with Robo with Robot Chicken. You've mm -hmm. done some of the things during the quarantine. A lot of people were just going crazy. It's just like we're pent up inside the house. What do we do now that we're here? And you took it and you made it creative. You made it your own. So I'm looking forward to seeing some of these upcoming projects. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm definitely going to go back to the Michael Michael's chicken. Um, it's crazy because we're already at the end of the year. Time just get away from us. So so I have to like literally put stuff on a piece of paper and put like dates where I have to do this or I will lose track of time. Because like I said, we're already almost in December. I feel like the year just started, so the time waits on no one. I, I tell you that. At 2024 flew by so fast, Michael. It's not even funny. Like my birthday, my 31st birthday is Halloween. This okay, month. happy early birthday. And thank you. And before you know it, as you've mentioned, November, December, and then January. 2025 will be here before you know it. This right. year has moved out so fast. Hi, Levi. Shout out to Levi Otis. Levi, okay. what it do? Yes. Director, I've had the pleasure of interviewing Levi. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. I miss y'all here. This is where I started on Facebook. And I just, wasn't working over there on IG, so I said, you know what? Let's bring it to Facebook. So this is my surprise to you. You guys had no idea I was going to pop up on here. But right. thank y'all so much family and friends but the year flew by so fast and that leads me to my next question for you what are you looking forward to as far as filmmaking we now have ai and all of these new technologies as a filmmaker what are you looking forward to for the new year um as a filmmaker i'm just looking to put out more projects um me personally I, I got projects that i wrote myself that i'm looking to put out like views which i'm starting to film and um, December, um, I do have a PG project called Girl Dad. This is a, for all the fathers with daughters that I plan to release on Father's Day. Um, 
And then I got more stage players, which I'm really excited about. Some of them are through the university and some of them are through um, outside of the university. So I'm just looking to stay busy and stay putting out content because what they teach you or what they tell you is the way to really succeed for filmmakers is just to continue to put out content. Like, don't stop. Like, keep putting it out. No matter if you get 10 views or 100 views, I, I want to make sure I'm putting something out. But I don't want to put out anything stupid, per se. I want everything I put out personally to have like a message behind it like i see people that do skits and they're doing skits that's going to get them killed i don't i don't want to do nothing like that i don't want to randomly prank nobody randomly jump in nobody's car i don't want to just put out content just for the sake of it i want it to have some type of meaning behind it so i'm just looking to stay busy for 2025 and put myself on but also work with other people like um it's this really talented actor named jayday He's from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I cannot wait to try to link up with him and work with him. Um, and yeah, I'm trying to think what other actors I really want to work with, but he's on the top of the list that I want to work with next. It's, it's a lot coming that is in store for the film industry, for the entertainment industry, period. Like, of course, you see everybody's talking about streaming. You can go on platforms and you can check out the films as well as the music. So I see a shift happening in sure. 2020 but from here 2024 to now on 2025 so a lot is going to be coming out in 2024. right right cinematic right right i agree i agree so talk about being a girl dad what's it like being <laughs> a girl dad? it is the greatest feeling in the world to me there's nothing like having a daughter it's crazy because you already know the love is unconditional, but it's like a it's a female version of you. It's a little girl version of you. And when I tell you, Aubrey is like me in every single way. It's scary sometimes because I'm, I'm looking at her and I'm looking at myself like you act like me. You're starting to talk like me. You try to steal some of the words I'd say. And it's it's cool. Um, and then she started mentioning she like boys. So then you got to be like, well, what type of boys you like? And how innocent is this? Like, I don't want you to move too fast. I know they show you guys so much now on the internet and I don't always monitor everything she watches because I trust her enough to know to not watch the wrong things. And so far she hasn't proven me any reason to not doubt her. Um, but being a girl dad is just, it's, I always have to be sensitive. I gotta watch what I say and how I say it. And that's probably the funny part because I find myself saying things and then I find myself saying things differently when I say it to her because she's so sweet and sensitive, I wouldn't want to hurt her feelings. Um, but it's cool. I, I like it. I love it. She plays the basketball games with me. She try to play um, the little shooting games I play. And she follows me around everywhere. She's like a shadow. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's really the greatest feeling ever. I have no complaints. That's probably my biggest accomplishment is being a girl dad. So I, I have nothing to complain about when it comes to her. She's just amazing. And Elijah, my son, is amazing as well. Um, he's like me in, in different ways, but Ari is more like exactly like me. And it's, it's scary sometimes, but yeah. Being a girl dad is it's the best. So when I write the movie, when I wrote the movie Girl Dad, um, it's really about this guy. He's a bachelor. And um, there's a 10-year-old that's on his doorstep. And she's actually playing the character in there. So we're in these acting classes together so she can learn how to act. Um, but now he has to change his bachelor life to being a dad and learning to how, how to adapt to a dad. And it's just my way of showing love to all the fathers that got daughters, because sometimes we get a bad label. You know, they always say dads aren't as great as moms and whatever, whatever the case may be. Um, so in this movie, I want to show the love and support I got for fathers with daughters, because we do a really good job. Absolutely, absolutely. And speaking of blessings, um. Levi, I don't know if you're still here or not. Levi said he wants to work with you over here. And Levi and L.A. Films, he wants to work with you. Levi reached out a few times. We, we got to make it work. I got to get to L.A. over there. <laughs> I'm, I'm we got a good social media relationship, so I can't wait to meet him in person. And, and he's an amazing filmmaker and a ra amazing creator and i can't wait to see what you guys come out with i'm looking forward to all of the new projects that are going to be coming out this season especially leading up to the holidays a lot of films are coming out a lot of films that are going to be in theory so i'm looking forward to see what you guys are going to come out with he says i fly my folks yeah out. i think they say i fly my folks out. <laughs> Levi, we got to get up brother 
Because I can't wait. I can't wait to see what you guys are going to be working on. All right, fashion dolls. For those of you who are new who are just watching, we are here with Michael Michael. And what I am going to do now, it is time, and I do this with all of my guests. Y'all know the drill. It is time to do the rapid five, and then we're going to do something called turn the tables. And this is where my guests get to ask me questions for my new viewers here on FB. I would typically say IG, but we're here on FB today. <laughs> so for my new viewers, because I got family and friends that are watching, you guys to get to know a little bit about me in the next thing, which is turn the tables. But I'm going to do the rapid five. So Michael has to tell me five things that he can't live without. All right? All right. And it has to be your guilty pleasures. Like for me, and I've mentioned this yesterday with Dane Smith on my show, one of my guilty pleasures is cookies and cream ice cream. So, mm. and everybody's like, how does she stay so fit to fit into these outfits? <laughs> <laughs> but listen, working out, not only that, but that's my guilty pleasure. I love cookies and cream. So for you, what are the five things that you can't listen to? Five things I cannot live out. I cannot live without my comfort TV show, which is Power, the OG series. Um, I can't live without my Xbox because that is my escape from reality. Um, hmm. I can't live without the gym. The gym is like another escape from reality. The gym is actually my new favorite thing. Like I'm there three, four times a week. So I can't live without that. I can't live without tacos. Tacos is the best. And it has to be homemade tacos. They are the best food ever. And five, let's see. I can't live without I'm trying not to give people because I don't want to make nobody jealous. Uh, the fifth thing. You know what? I'm going to say I can't live without my camera, my, my black magic camera, because that's what I use to, to create content. But if I had a bonus, it would be I can't live without the support of my wife, my kids, my sisters, my mom, my dad. That would be number six. So, yes. It's just the number one, Michael. <laughs> but you included them in the list as well, too. And that's important. I can't live without family either. Like, my mom means everything to me. And I don't know where I would be without her. So, yeah. I agree. My heart is beating so fast. I have no clue what Michael is going to ask me. So I'm going to pass him on down the microphone, and he's going to ask okay. me some questions. For my new viewers out here, for my old viewers, for my family, you guys are watching here on F. All right, it is time to turn those tapes. <laughs> Take it away. All right, question number one. Who is your favorite music artist and why? My favorite music artist. Wow. I would have to say Whitney Houston. Whitney oh, Houston. great voice. One of the greatest voices of all time. I remember seeing her, and it was at one of the award shows. I think it was the AMAs, and I just felt instantly in love. She came out looking like a runway model, this big, curly, lion mane, beautiful, big voice. I was enamored. And then she dealt it out about the notes, how will I know? So Whitney's one of my favorites. So, yeah. Okay, I agree. Whitney Houston, for me, Whitney Houston is the greatest of all time. So that's a great option. I don't think you can pick anyone better. <laughs> All right, let me think. Question number two. What is on your bucket list that you have not done yet? I want to do in-person shows. Oh. I've been doing show virtually in person, but I get questions, well, virtually, like <laughs> how we're doing it. But I would like to do it in person because I know the audience wants to be able to interact. They want to be able to feel. They want to be able to touch. They can't do that through the screen. But they feel our energy when we're doing our interviews. And what I love is that they interact. So I would like to do shows virtually. That's something on my bucket list that I would yeah. try to do it in person. I like the in-person shows. I think that would be that would give a different type of vibe, a different type of energy. And when you do get to that point, make sure I'm, I'm there with you. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. All right. Question number three. Hmm. What is one actor you want to meet? It could be local. It could be famous. One actor I would love to meet. I would have to say mm -hmm. to R.G.P. Henson. I love oh, yeah. her. I love She's such a girly girl. We both love hair and nails. I use her hair products religiously. <laughs> so I would have to say to Raji. It's, it's something about her, her personality. She's so laid back and down. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to ask you a personal question. 
where do you see your love life going for 2025? <laughs> 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 How much time do we have here? <laughs> we, get, we, get, we got five <laughs> seconds. <laughs> I am single. I am single. So the type of guy that I'm looking for is a guy that's adventurous. I, I love to yeah. have fun. I'm a hands-on person. I'm bubbly. I'm energetic. I'm fun going. I'm outgoing. So I don't just like to be still. And I think that's a Scorpio thing. We don't like to be still. We have to be doing something. Right. So the type of guy that I'm looking for is a guy that likes to run. A guy that, is rich, a guy that just has his goals, his ambitions, his dreams. That's what I look for. In there. So that's I where I that was a great answer. <laughs> I didn't no, he was gonna go that far, y'all. All right, I that's, yeah, that's all. I, that's all I got. <laughs> all right, all right fashion dolls. Leave. I didn't know that you work with her on that's, Empire. That's dope, Leva. Leva, be getting around. He be out here. And that show, for those of you who do not know, that show was taped in Chicago. Yeah. It was. It's a great show. And I and Lee Daniels is doing bigger things. I don't know if you guys just seen the most recent the deliverance, but go and check it out. I've heard mad reviews about it. So definitely. Yeah. I love Empire. Well, the first three seasons. The story the story writing was amazing and you know. And go back to, to Raji real quick. One thing about actors, she said one thing that stood out and that was in one of her quotes. She said, I won't do it if it doesn't scare me. Actors take a lot of challenges. And Michael, you know that. You know, when you're on set, you're doing things you're not comfortable doing. It takes you out of your comfort zone and out of body experience. She says, I won't do it if it doesn't scare me. Correct. There have been actors that I've sat with on this platform and interviewed, and it's like, okay, I need to separate myself away from the character. And they've literally had to do that. It's, it's yeah. difficult. You know, t- tuning in or tapping into that side, whether he's, they, the director or producer calls you to be angry or mm-hmm. they call you to do something that you really wouldn't want to do. And it's like, okay, I have to check those coach. That was one thing right. that just happened is that I just take a lot of risks and she won't do it if it doesn't scare her. Right. And that's true. And then piggybacking on that, what they do is they have you pull from real emotions because everybody's been mad before. Everybody's been sad before. So it's not really fake emotions. It's really real emotions. It's just something that you've been through. So you're just pulling from that. And then you have to remember the, the lines and scenes and try to make it. Sometimes you got to try to make connections between you and your character. But I think the best part or the most challenging part is pulling from those real emotions because sometimes we forget those emotions. But we, what we don't realize is that we had those emotions stored in us. We just have to bring it out and, and try to remember the way we felt. So, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Have you ever found yourself having to detox from a character? Oh. You played a character. Um, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Not really detoxing. Um, I don't really get lost in certain characters and maybe I haven't had a character yet that, that allows me to get so much lost into them. Um, if I play more of a sinister person or one of those type of roles, then that would probably be one of those methods where I may get lost because I'm trying to reach that character and understand them. Um, but not yet, not yet. You know what? A lot. Raising in the Sun, George, um, the guy who played George, he's like a really preppy guy. And I still do it to this day. Some of his body language, I still do it. And my daughter and my wife yeah. laughs at me all the time. They be like, stop it, George. Because it's his mannerisms. And I've learned to adapt it because I had to do the show seven days straight. And we was practicing for like 60 days straight. So, yes, George McCurston, if you ever um, watched or saw Raising in the Sun. Yeah. Yes, yes, that, that character. character. That, but that happens to actors, though. Like it was, who was it? It was Kiki Palmer. She said the role of a pimp. She played a pimp, and she was talking a certain way, and she brought the character home with her. Right. So that's why I asked that question because a lot of actors sometimes tend to bring the character home with them, and the family is looking at them like, "What are you doing? Why are you right. talking like this? You can't help it. It's natural." Right. You're you're used to it at this point, so that's that's mm-hmm. that's the most. And I still it's just it's the body language, and I, I can't help it. Um. <laughs> So before we close out, this is such a great conversation. We've got to do this again. Again, I apologize about technical issues. Hopefully, 
IG will get it right Hopefully. where I'm able to Wait, see. I got to stop restricting the violations. <laughs> yes, where I'm able to see you. Because I was like, what's going Man. on? You can't Man. see me. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I appreciate you allowing me to be on your platform. This was amazing. So I'm glad it worked out. Although we have to use Facebook, I'm, I'm just happy to be here and grateful. So thank you. Yes. Before we let you go, Mike, uh -huh. are there any gems that, that you would like to leave to future filmmakers? And yes. Yeah. Um, I just I tell people, man, follow your dreams because everybody's not going to believe in you and everybody is not meant to believe in you because this, your dream is not meant for other people. It's meant for you. And I know a lot of people be trying to question if it's meant for them or not. Um, I feel like the moment that idea crosses your mind, that's that's pretty much it. And I believe in God 100 percent. So I do believe if you take steps, God is going to take steps with you. So that's my gem, man. D do your dreams. And people are not going to believe in you. And it's going to be people that's close to you. Don't take it personal because everybody's vision isn't for them, it's for you. So that's all I got. Absolutely. And to add on to what Michael just said, today's final thought comes from Henry Ford. And you guys remember him inventing the cars, okay? He Correct. says, if everyone is moving forward together, then success takes care of itself. And it takes a village. Make sure that you're surrounded by people who love you, care for you. And I've seen some of my family and friends that are in my city coming in here, watching the interview. I thank y'all so much. And it was God's will to do this interview here where I first started, because you guys are now getting to see what I do in real time. And y'all came in and y'all showed up and y'all supported. Thank y'all so much. And that's thank what it you guys takes for watching. Moving forward. So, Michael, before we let you go, where can everyone check you out? You have five projects coming out, some mm -hmm. are in production, some in post-production. So where can everyone check you out to see the project? Um, these new projects, I believe, are going to be on Peacock and Tubi. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what stream they're putting them on, but I know for sure it's Peacock and Tubi. So we're, we're waiting on the rest to see what other um, deals they get to where they can put it on different platforms. All right. Fashion Dolls, there you go. To you guys, follow Mike. Let everyone know where they can follow you and check you out. Give them your handles. Yeah, you guys, I really just do Instagram. So really follow me on Michael Michael Instagram. You can do Facebook, which is a little bit more personal, but mainly Instagram is it's the best. Michael Michael. All right, Fashion Dolls. And <laughs> thank you all for joining me today. Monday, we have Flyboy, the great one, joining me. So make sure you guys tune in. I love y'all, and I will see y'all Monday. Take care, everyone. See y'all Monday. Thank you. You too.